Hello and welcome to Doctor Networks. My name is Ahmed Mukhtar and this is a free CCNA course offered by us. And do share this video and subscribe our channel because that shows us your support. So today we're going to be looking at iOS. Understanding iOS and most uh, recently what it's known as is iOS XC. This is the operating system of the Cisco devices. Then we're going to be looking at connecting a Cisco device in real life. So what components you need to connect a Cisco's device in real life. And then we will be implementing and emulating that real life scenario in a lab on Packet Tracer. Okay, understanding iOS, iOS XC. So what is the iOS? First off, it stands for Intro Network Operating System. Uh, what it is, is basically the operating system of the Cisco devices and it is a command line interface. So you might say, okay, what's the big deal with that? You know, like Windows has a command line interface, Linux had it. So we all have that. So what's the difference between them and this? So I'll be like, well, this internet network operating system is a series of command sets. So you have a series of commands that you put in that you can use to set up any Cisco device. So the main reason behind learning this operating system is uh, Cisco is very consistent with its products. Means if you have a router, you have a switch, even if you have uh, um, an ICE server. Icebox, an ACS box, a Cisco Prime, more on that. Uh, they all have this uh, flavor of iOS. Even the ASA has this look and feel of this operating system, even though it's a bit different on the back end because ASA series of Cisco is a firewall series and uh, they make it different with a reason, with one good reason, and that is because if any bug comes up in the iOS, um, Anyone could, you know, uh, manipulate that uh, vulnerability and exploit that on the ASA as well. So they make it a little bit different, but the look and feel of all the platforms, normally all the platforms, uh, are, are the same. So you can learn it once and use it many times. That is the beauty. So we come up with this part that uh, what is the difference between iOS uh, and iOS XC. Now, iOS um, has been for like um, many years back. Now, the problem with iOS was it was really uh, installed in the hardware. So we couldn't really do any programmability with that and the new features of software define. So they came up with an iOS XC, which really stands for Next Generation Enterprise. Uh, this X basically stands for Next and E for Enterprise. So it is basically on top of Linux. So this is your device and you have a Linux kernel running Linux. And on top of that, you still have your iOS. So your iOS is still there natively, not like the native iOS yeah, that was just uh, installed directly on to the, to the device. Now you have a Linux kernel in here. So because of the Linux kernel, you have much more flexibility of pro programmability and the automation part. So that's pretty much it. We shouldn't be not getting into too deep into iOS and iOS XC. So any new device that is shipped now is iOS XC. Connecting to a Cisco's device. Now the iOS is an operating system, but it's not like Windows where you boot a switch and there is some kind of monitor or display that you're looking for. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, it actually has uh, to have a console connection with your PC. So first off, you need a console cable. They come in different shapes and sizes. Okay, first of all, the legacy console cable is this one. And this is a COM connector if your laptop supports it, um, which I highly doubt. Nowadays, laptops don't have this COM port with them, so they have to connect to a converter. This is a converter. 
uh, you plug in this COM port towards this male converter and they in turn convert that those signals to an USB so you plug that USB port towards your uh, PC which is the second port uh, point and that uh, plug the serial USB and on your PC if you have a serial then it's okay if not you most probably will have a converter to do that or you may have uh, native console cables that uh, that are already converted so an RJ45N is coming up to an USB-N and there are some newer consoles that have a smart USB on one side and a, a USB on the other which you can plug to your laptop so the third point to plug the RJ45 or mini USB and into the console port of the device so this is a snippet of the device this is a Cisco's Catalyst 2960 and as you can see here we have two ports of console the blue actually shows the console part so if you have this kind of console with you uh, you can plug it in or you could also plug in the mini USB console so next up that is the point four you need to have a terminal program um, if you have an old Windows like XP you, you know about hyper terminal so that was a free one but nowadays you have putty and Rudy uh, you could download them from the internet and they are free um, some of them are paid like secure CRT is paid I think Terraterm is paid too I'm not sure about that but uh, it's another program to uh, get the console of the device uh, so uh, once you have the terminal program the next step is if you have any bother settings that are different which normally aren't different but the main thing is that this bother it should be the same from your end once you're connecting with the PC and to the device uh, this is for example this is a switch once you connect both of them the bother between them should be same if it's different you will see um, a garbage kind of a output coming out you won't be able to read what's going on so th this should be the same and these parameters don't really change unless there is you know like I don't know what's gonna prompt you for to changing all of these so the main thing is the baud rate okay guys welcome to packet tracer so we've just learned about all those methods uh, like you get a console cable and plug it plug the serial to the PC plug the RJ45 into the console port of the device and get a terminal program to and set and set the com parameters so we're gonna be doing just that in packet tracer so first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna click network devices and then I'm gonna be going towards the switches and selecting 2960 so once I have the 2960 I need a PC on which I'm gonna be terminating that uh, console cable so going to end devices now and dragging the laptop in so it's a gen 1 laptop maybe that has an a connector a uh, com port so next up is I need the console so I go to connections and this is the console so I click the console and first of all I click the laptop and it says RS232 is basically the technical name for the COM port so click on that and click on the switch now and it says okay which port on the switch do you want me to connect this console cable on so that will be the console port obviously that we showed you and this is now connected now let us get to the configuration tab of this laptop so we get in, go into desktop so we have a lot of options that we can test but we're gonna be going into the terminal terminal option now it only has one com port so it doesn't let you specify which com port to select uh, normally in the real life you will be given that option uh, so this is the baud rate so you could set it to whatever you want uh, this should match between the device and you so everything is set to default um, so let's hit OK so once I hit OK there is the console of the switch so it's, it's, it's telling me to type uh, press return to get started so 
this is the console of the switch so, so i'm not going to be going into the console of the device because i want you to first learn about the different modes that we have and in the next lecture we will be discussing uh, how the ios really functions so i hope this has been informative for you and thank you for your time